Once again, 100.5 Jack FM presents the picture book interview with Chad the Intern. All right, it's Chad the Intern. I am about to call Frank Marino. I believe he is somewhere lost in a television studio doing some news program. Thank you for calling Channel 3. Yeah, I am uh, looking to talk to Frank Marino. Okay, hold on one moment. Hello? Is this Frank? <laughs> it's like a comedy. Yeah, isn't it? Hey, it's Chad the Intern, Jack FM. How are you? Good, how's it going? Excellent. Um, it's This has been kind of uh, hard to get track you down. <laughs> But we, we finally have accomplished it. You're, you're at Channel 3 right now? I'm at Channel 3. I just left Channel 13. You are so popular. I tell you, now I'm on your channel. That's right. So uh, Divas Las Vegas is going to be, uh, when, is that, when is that open? Uh, this Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday for Labor Day weekend. We have two shows a night. We have uh, 6 p.m. and we have a 10 p.m. So we're trying both spectrums to see which does better. And the whole thing is, after doing Lacage for 25 years, I put my own show together calling it Divas Las Vegas, and we're opened at the Imperial Palace. And if we do well, we're going to consider staying there. Well, and uh, now d- explain Divas to everybody if they've never seen Lacage before. Divas is basically all... Uh, it's a 100% male show where we impersonate every woman that's ever performed on the strip. We have everything from Diana Ross, Barbara Streisand, Tina Turner, Cher, Madonna, and we have brand new people for the younger people like Lady Gaga, Beyonce, Britney Spears. So it's a little something from everybody. The audience ranges from prom kids to senior citizens. It's a lot of fun. It's a 75-minute show. It's fast-paced. I come out in between each show. I start as Joan Rivers, and then I do my own femme fatale character, where I just wear the crazy Bob Mackie gowns, and the audience goes nuts, and the <laughs> comedy, and it's, it's just a lot of fun, and this new version of it is just amazing. Now, what is the character after Joan Rivers? Um, after Joan is just my own made-up character, me and blonde hair, sort of like RuPaul is for music, I'm to comedy, I guess. Do you have a name for that character? Yes, Frank Marino. We don't use any other <laughs> names because I like seeing mine on the marquee. <laughs> I don't blame you. So, 25. You, you, I mean, you've you've been the longest running uh, entertainer in, in Las Vegas history. Is that correct? Yes, I'm the longest running entertainer in Las Vegas. That is amazing. And the youngest. And the youngest on top of it. You so you see started, that? You started when you were what? 15? Is that the deal? I, I think it was more like eight. <laughs> That's beautiful. And you know something, I haven't talked to you for so long, and for people who don't know, I used to be on another radio station, and we did this whole Queer Eye for the Radio guy. And That's right. You and your friends uh, did a little makeover on me, which you didn't take, necessarily, but that was because... It of, didn't take? You mean you changed the look back? Yeah, I kind of changed it back. You know, I'm kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of rough around the edges, I guess, but uh, I haven't talked to you in so long. I, I didn't know that you uh, wrote a book. I did. His Majesty the Queen. Now, what is that about? That's my whole life story, and then it's got makeup tips in it. And the reason I threw the makeup tips in it is because after my show, every night, all the women want to know uh, how you do your hair, how you do your makeup. Now, are you doing that yourself, or do you have somebody that helps you with that? Um, I do all my own makeup now. When I first started, I had a makeup artist, but I do my own now because it's just, it just it calms me down. That's like my hour before the show where I get into the, the whole scene of doing the show. So you're an accomplished makeup artist on top of being an author, uh, an actor, performer, comedian. I mean, what else, what haven't you done? You're like the Renaissance man. I did, you know what, since I saw you, I did a lot. I got a street named after me. I heard about that. I have Frank Marino Drive now. I got a star on Las Vegas Boulevard. Congratulations. That was exciting. Got the second one, actually. The first one went to um, Wayne Newton, obviously well-deserved, and I got the second one. So you got trumped by Wayne. I got trumped by Wayne, but I still beat out Liberace and Sammy Davis, <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy. That's not bad company to be in, Frank. No, pretty good, huh? Where's Frank Marino Drive at? Frank Marino Drive is up in the lakes, and the star itself is in front of the Riviera Hotel. And so, when, now, were there ceremonies involved when you got oh, all yeah, this? Oh, yeah, big ceremony. We did big ceremonies um, for, for actually both of them. Did you? Yeah, and the, mayor, the day the star went up, the mayor proclaimed it was February 1st, 2005, Frank Marino Day. I saw that, yeah. And you and Mayor Goodman are uh, good pals, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, actually on your show is uh, when we did Queer for the Straight Guy for him as well. That's right. I forgot about that. And we... he didn't keep his look either. And, no. and uh, <laughs> well, I might have to come back and revamp everybody. <laughs> well, it's nothing against you at all. Obviously, you did a great job. But I think it's just a matter of being comfortable. We also did um, Nate Tannenbaum, I believe. Exactly. So, so you made your rounds, and, and how, you know, all those guys that we, we did that with, you still in contact with all of them? Yeah, I'm in contact with all of them. And actually, I liked your look. I liked you in hot pants. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, if <laughs> and Daisy Duke. No, no, that never happened. But I, you know, I had a lot of fun with you guys, and you guys were a lot of fun. And and you know, the whole queer eye thing that kind of went away. That is that even on. TV it's not anymore? even on. The guy from that show has gone on to do other television shows, but none as good as that one. Well, I really thought I really thought that maybe that would be a, a good, uh, you know a local thing that you could have done. Right, over and over, you mean? Yeah, no, but yeah, like on, on a t- they do a television show, not just do the radio thing. Right, right. I think that would have been. I think that would have been a hit. I actually do now. I ha- I do the recap on Channel Thirteen for um, Dancing with the Stars. So when that starts up in two weeks, right? Uh, I do all the the next morning stuff on the news. So I sort of got into news anyway, some in a in a different way. So now Dancing with the Stars, obviously you follow that. Is there who do you know who the uh, the new stars are this year? Well, I know a couple of Donny Osmond, Macy Gray, uh, Kelly Osbourne. Um, Kelly Osborne. Yes. Right? That should be interesting. That's strange, right? That gives you a lot of material, though, I'm guessing. It, it does, and the fact that Donnie's from Vegas now as well. Are, now, are you friends with Donnie? Um, no, but I'm telling you, if I stay at the Imperial Palace, he's in the same pod for Harris. He's over at Flamingo. Right. I want to put a Marie in the show. Yeah, that would be great. You know, to do a spoof, so that would be nice. Now, when you before you do all those, you know, all these spoofs and stuff, do you do you go get permission or ask, you know, consent for that, or you just do it? No, usually everybody's really, um, what do you call that Accepting, word? Accepting, yeah. Yes, um, except Joan Rivers, you know, who's also playing this weekend with me next door at the Venetian. Uh, in '86, she sued me for five million dollars. Yeah, I never understood why. What's the what, um, what's the grief um, at there? the time? I was very young and I was using some of her jokes, and she didn't like that. So since then, what we've done is taken all her material out, and we, you know we do her style, but not her. Now, are you, have you guys made up? Or oh you... yeah, we're very good friends. She might come to the show Saturday night. She told me. So even though the whole lawsuit that that, that all got resolved, and now you guys are pals. Yes, and thank God we settled for the five million because I was like eighty bucks short. <laughs> So this Friday it opens, and it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and Monday, and Monday, four days, and six and ten p.m. So the early birds could come, and the late nighters. And then you're going to determine from there if you're going to go on with the six or the ten o'clock version, or both. Right. Or? So if we stay, we'll decide which version works best, and uh, if it goes well, we'll have another permanent home. And I, I just want to mention, I'm teamed up with Spy Entertainment. Uh, they're the ones um, co-producing it with me now, and that's where you know Alex, who was on the show with me doing Queer Eye with you. Yeah, absolutely. My partner Alex is the vice president of that company, so we're keeping it all in the family. Well, congratulations on all your success again, and uh, thanks for coming on and talking to us. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. You have been listening to the Picture Book Interview with 100.5 Jack FM and Jack TV. Good day.